Well, hey folks, welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. Uh, in my last video, I, uh, I talked about my 400 watt uh, solar system that I use for my off-grid cabin. I live off-grid full-time, been off-grid for 20 years now, a little over that. And uh, this system uh, takes care of all of my power needs uh, for my cabin, runs everything in my cabin. Now, I talked in the last video about removing snow and how easy it is because I have a ground mount system and uh, it, so the snow basically just slides off. If the snow is just a, a small, thin patch, it actually, the, as soon as it warms up, the snow, because it's at a 45 degree angle, will just slide off. But in this video, I want to talk about uh, temperatures and how that affects your solar panel systems, okay? And uh, it's kind of a myth because a lot of people think, well, the hotter it is, then the better solar panels work. Actually, it's the opposite. When they test solar panels, uh, they test them in a range of between 55 and 70 degrees, 77 degrees. And so the, the optimum temperature uh, for a solar panel is somewhere in that range. Up to about 70 degrees uh, is, is the optimum temperature that you want to keep your solar panels at or below, okay? In wintertime, when it's colder, you don't lose efficiency of your solar panels. So your solar panels will actually work somewhat better in cold weather and in winter uh, than they do in real, really hot temperatures. For every uh, 10 degrees above 70 degrees, you're going to lose as much as 1% of your efficiency. So if you're getting uh, to 80 degrees, you're losing 1% of your efficiency. 90 degrees, you're losing 2%. 100 degrees, you're losing 3% of your efficiency. So in summertime, your solar panels, even though you might be getting more direct sunlight, you're still losing efficiency the hotter the temperature goes. So in winter, you actually have the benefit of having the panels cooler so that they will be more efficient. And another benefit of if you live in snow country, like I do, obviously, we got four inches of snow uh, the night before last, and last night we got about another inch of snow out here. The snow, if you notice, I leave the snow kind of build up. I don't scrape this down in front of my panels because this acts like a reflector. So the sun right now is fairly low uh, uh, going across the sky. It's, it, in summertime, it's quite high. But in wintertime, it's fairly low. And what happens is the sun will reflect off of this snow. And this acts like a reflector to reflect additional light onto the solar panels. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind if you have, especially if you have a ground mount system like this is don't remove the snow in front of your solar panels. Leave the snow there because it's acting as a reflector so the sunlight will come in, hit, and reflect up onto the solar panels which gives you the additional sunlight that you don't normally have in winter time. Uh, you may have low sun days. You're getting additional reflective sun off of, the, off of the snow and that really can make a, quite a bit of difference in your output. Now, you do want to make sure that you keep the snow. As you can see, I brushed my panels off. You do want to make sure that you keep the panels free from snow and, of course, any shade, leaves, or anything like that. But it's important, I think, to understand that uh, in wintertime, solar works very, very well. It actually can be more efficient in wintertime than it would be in a very, very hot uh, summer day because of the colder temperatures cool the cells down, and so... The, and it all, you also get the effect of the reflective sun from the snow, so you're going to have more efficiency on a sunny winter day than you will on a very hot summer day. All right, I hope that explains um, temperatures and how they will affect your solar panels. Solar works extremely well in winter. I have very good output from my system. Now, just a brief explanation. This is my 400-watt system. These are four 100-watt Renogi mono panels. And you can get these for, right now, I think they're running around $100 or so for a 100-watt panel. And my system is four 100-watt Renogi panels. And uh, right now, I'm using three 125-amp-hour VMAX tank batteries. I have reached my lifetime limit on those batteries. They're reaching about eight years. So I'm going to be transitioning to the new LifePo 4, uh, which is a lithium battery. And I plan on doing that as soon as the weather clears up and it warms up enough that I want to come out and work on my system, then I'm going to be transitioning over to those new LifePool 4 batteries. But I've been very impressed and happy with the VMAX tank, which is an, a sealed uh, battery called an AGM battery. 
And then I also use a, uh, I use a, a simple uh, Blue Sky 30 amp MPPT controller. And, uh, you know, you want to use an MPPT controller because it can get as much as 15% more out of your panels than, it, than you will with uh, the cheaper uh, type of controllers. And I just use a 500 watt uh, inverter on my system because my cabin, which you can see behind me here, my cabin is wired for DC power and I use direct current DC power uh, for a lot of my appliances like my fridge freezer and uh, a lot of uh, my lights, my water pump are all DC uh, because DC has less loss because you don't have to transition the power from AC back to DC to run these appliances. And so running direct DC, I can use a smaller inverter and so I use a 500 watt inverter uh, for my system. And like I said, I've been over 20 years now off grid with just this 400 watt system which works very well for all my needs. And I have pretty much everything in my cabin that you have in a regular home. Uh, about the only thing I don't have is a dishwasher. Uh, I wash my dishes in the sink and I don't uh, have a, a, a dryer um, and I hang my clothes on the line. But I do have a washing machine. Uh, I have a microwave. I have lots of cooking appliances. I run two laptops. I have a uh, what they call a swamp cooler uh, for summer use because we're in a low humidity area here. And uh, I I run my computers, I recharge my gadgets, I recharge my e-bike for transition for transportation. And right now with gas prices going through the roof, uh, I plan on riding that e-bike a lot more for like uh, running to town to resupplying so I don't have to use any gas. All of those things can be recharged very well off just a 400 watt system like this. All right. So this is my system. This is my recommendation that you leave your snow in front of your panels in winter. And just, just to let you know that solar works great in winter time. Uh, however, we may, might get, you know, a couple, three days of very low sunshine in winter. Happens sometimes. And in that case, that's why you need the batteries. The batteries store the excess power from the, the solar panels during the daytime. I, usually by 10 o'clock, my batteries are completely full. And then I, I, I'm using the excess power during the daytime for running my appliances so I'm not draining the batteries down. Then at night I have enough storage capacity in my batteries to last me a good three days uh, without if I don't get very good sun, which does happen occasionally. So my system is matched perfectly for my needs and uh, has worked very well over the years. I also have a 200 watt recharging station uh, that I use for recharging gadgets and tools and other things like that. But this is my main system that I use right here and have used for a long time. Okay, I hope that was informative and that you got something from it. Uh, and if you are interested in learning more about my system, how to install solar panels, and how to set up your systems and, and choose the right equipment, you can go to my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com, uh, where you can get my Ultimate Off-Grid eBook, which is completely full of all kinds of information for off-grid electrical systems, plus all the other systems, your water system, your septic system, composting, toilets, and you can get the uh, package deal that includes lots of cabin plans uh, that I've designed over the years. If you want to learn how to build your own cabins uh, and uh, inexpensively and do it yourself, cabins that are designed for off-grid living to be sustainable and efficient, go to my website, simplesolarhomesetting.com. Get yourself a set of plans. Get yourself a copy of the Ultimate Off-Grid eBook. Uh, you'll find that the uh, prices are very affordable. A set of plans is generally $5. You can get the Ultimate Off-Grid eBook for $5 on my website. All right, folks, hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great winter day.